Good afternoon, everyone. It is Stephen and Andrea from Pin in the Atlas. Today, we are at a pretty cool site. What is it? We are miles in the middle of nowhere, high up in the Gila Mountains, and we are going to explore the Gila Cliff Dwellings. Let's take a look. These cliff dwellings were first discovered by White Man in 1878. In fact, it was a prospector who was looking for silver in these mountains who discovered them by the name of Alman. But prior to that, the dwellings actually date back to 1200 AD, and they know this by testing the wood. We've been hiking along this beautiful scenic trail, very peaceful. We just caught a sneak peek of where we're going. Right up in there. Do you see the roof line? So this is the photo view. Though the trail stops here. They don't let you go beyond this point. Some trees have fallen down. I'm going to raise the camera up. See if you can get a better view. And now we begin the trek up the steps. They say the elevation game is about uh, the same as climbing 18 stories. Okay, let's go. So these caves that you can see behind me are all natural caves and had been used for thousands of years by nomadic tribes. It wasn't until around 1200 AD that a more permanent residence uh, took place and they actually decided to stay and build a home. So we're getting closer to the dwellings themselves. You can see they're just down there. One of the things about these places is not just the history, it's how impressive they are. Just these natural wonders can make you feel extremely small in the grand scheme of everything that's taken place that they've seen. And we just come here and visit for 20 minutes and then are gone. They stay here. Imagine everything they see in their lifetime, what they've been through. Earth-wide changes. I don't know, I just find that cool. See here a miniature foundation. And then how the walls have been, and the roof have been blackened from fire. And there's another little spot there. Made it to the base of the first dwellings. 
And again, the entire roof line of that rock, it's all black from the fire. But look at the window. Look at how they've made the window with the beams, the, the wood beams. I guess these are the, the wood that they've dated back to 1200 AD. Mm. These people were ingenious. Now, archaeologists believe that only about 12 families of the Mogian tribe came here and stayed. And they didn't stay for very long, approximately 20 years before they moved on. Now, while they were here, they hunted, they grew crops, and they were fantastic pottery makers. Very, very ingenious people. And they don't know why they left. Let's explore. All right. The moment you've all been waiting for, we're going to go inside. Imagine living here. It'd be extremely protected from the elements. Feel nice and safe in here. Nice and cool as well. Yeah. I bet it heated up really quick. Let's continue on. Oh. You can see in some of the ruins there's foundations. There was more to this at one point. So I'll show you, normally we don't, we try not to, but you gotta say, people have been graffitiing in here, carving their names. That's so disrespectful, it's not even funny. You need to leave these heights historic and untouched, the way you found them. Nobody cares that you were here. So apparently there's five main caves here and approximately 46 different rooms. Pretty amazing. Again, here's a view outside and you see just the steps going down. It's really incredible that we're still able to get in here and do this. The small rooms like everywhere. Reminds me of like the guard tower. bird's eye view? Yeah. Here. So I just climbed up one of the ladders. Can't go in any further, but 
you can see all the individual rooms with their windows. It's pretty neat. So that's the ladder we've just climbed down. So we're going to keep going this direction. There's another little ladder to peek over. Before we do the ladder, there's some more rooms. They must have been quite tiny people. Could you imagine today's people with their McDonald's and the amount they've eaten getting through those tiny little holes, those yeah. doorways? Is going up. Toss her the camera. You can see uh, foundations in the corner, more windows, and also holes. Maybe that's where the uh, timbers were. Carry on this direction here. That's the last little spot of that room. Another dwelling. I uh, see so here would have been the doorway. Another small doorway here. We've reached the end of the trail. You wouldn't want to suffer with vertigo, would you? <laughs> now the fun part. Here's where we descend. These stone steps down over to that ladder. So I think I'm going to have to turn you off. We'll pick back up at the bottom. It's a bit creepy. What, did you have McDonald's before you came here? Nicely done. Back outside, give you one last view from this angle at the bottom. And see there's another level here. Doesn't go back very far, but another spot. Now, we must make our descent back down the mountain. We'll see you down there. Get a sense of some of the height. And we thought we were done with the steps, but now we gotta go back down. Now here's another massive opening. Bet the acoustics were incredible in there. They probably could have held some ceremonies. We're at the lower scorpion campground on a trail looking for a pictograph that one of the rangers told us about. And here we found some more Mogollon dwellings. What's Hello. it like? So the first trail we were on kind of petered out just beyond the, uh, the Mogollon cliff dwellings. So we came back to another trail and these have got to be the pictographs. Now the ranger that told us about these also said that if you know where to look inside the Gila Cliff dwellings, you can find some in there as well. We didn't know that till afterwards. He said they're kind of hard to spot. But he said if you want to, definitely come take a look at these. And we're glad we did.
see there's a figure there. Sorry, the camera's going to be in the way on this one. The sun. There's another figure. Some other things can't quite make out. Might be a bird down there, the spiral. Or bullseye. This looks like water or mountains. And that one up there, that's the most eye catching. Those look like mountains to me. Another mystery just behind these pictographs here is this huge stone. You can see there is some like carvings down it, but it's Geologists have come out and look at it and said it's unnaturally worn down into this shape. So they don't know if the Mogollon used it to sharpen tools, children use it as a slide, or what's going on. But like I said, you can see what looks like some tool marks and some grooves along this face. Yeah, when you get up close to it, some of the the texture, it's a bit, it has been like smoothed out. Fascinating. Here you can see a lot better what we're talking about. And you see the, the natural rock. And then look at this. Absolutely smooth. You can see it's worn. There's some more spots right down here and here. This one's really indented. And here you go. Here and here. But this one's really, really deep. It's almost like uh was used maybe like a grinding stone. Yeah, so you say like all over this rock, even there, that's all smoothed out. So the whole rock be fascinating to go back in time and see what they were using it for. We have reached the end of the video. We just before we wrap up completely, we wanted to mention uh, getting up to your, to the Gila Cliff dwellings is quite hair raising. The road is 44 miles, full of switchbacks, drop offs. You go up the mountain, back down the mountain, up another mountain, and back down again before you reach this destination. So if you're a bit of a timid driver, nervous driver get somebody else to drive for you. Drive slowly and drive safely. Do you have a true story you would like to tell everyone? <laughs> About Did Geronimo? Geronimo and the Apaches used to frequent this place and made it quite famous, apparently. True story. I remember Geronimo from Seneca Lake. Yep and Seneca Lake. Yeah. We'll put the link to that up there. That's a good video, you should watch it. So, thank you for coming along with us to the Gila Cliff Dwellings. We hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed filming it. Now get out there, get exploring, go put another pin in the atlas, and we will see you on our next adventure. Bye. Bye. We have reached the end of the video. We do have one thing to mention about getting to the Gila Cliff Dwellings. Uh, the road coming in is 44 miles. 44 miles 
of switchbacks, hairpin bends, and sheer drop-offs. So, uh, and wild animals. So, if you are a little bit nervous driving, there's your warning. That's pretty crap for you, isn't it? I know, because you started laughing, and then I looked at you, and then you took over. We have now reached the end of the video. I do want to mention, getting up here to the Gila Cliff, Cliff Dwellings is uh, quite hair-raising. It's 44 miles, single track. Well, we want to mention quickly before we go, getting up here to the Gila Cliff Dwellings is uh, kind of hair-raising. The road coming up here, it's 44 miles and it's windy. There's switchbacks, there's drop-offs. You climb up the mountain, you go down the mountain, you climb up the mountain again. So it took us quite a while to get here actually. But uh, we thought it was uh, well worth it. If you're a little bit nervous driving, maybe have somebody else drive. <laughs> I have one fun fact for you. Geronimo and the Apaches used to frequent this place. That's it. True story. True story. <laughs>